So I've been working on small engines for quite some time now, and even though it pales in comparison to some of the viewers out there, I think I've had my fair share of life-changing events. And according to a few of the customers I've had to deal with, most of their concerns about their equipment is apparently so important that they couldn't live without some of the smaller details being absolutely perfect, and if not, have even threatened to take their business elsewhere. In today's video, we take a look at this Craftsman lawnmower and the problems that I just got at home after picking it up off the curb from someone who had it by their trash cans. I absolutely look forward to trash day, at least the evening before, because sometimes you can find stuff like this that's completely repairable. All it needs is a bit of cleaning of the carb and of course the mower itself, and that's only if you want to try and sell it to make a good profit. Now, I may have already fixed this mower in a different video, so if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. But before I fixed it, I had to give it a quick cleaning, that way I don't get dirt in places like inside the carb, the fuel tank, or even inside the engine. While I clean this mower, I'm going to talk about something that I think most fixers don't want to talk about, which is having to deal with some of the outrageous or even strange requests or concerns from some of their customers. Now, there's nothing wrong if you have a particular item you want addressed, but what happens if it's something that doesn't really matter in any way, shape, or form to how the machine works? Of course, to you or me, it's something odd or even unexpected, but to them, it means life or death, and they're going to make sure it's done their way or not at all. The worst part is, I don't think what they want is anything too outlandish or beyond reason, so you really can't fault them for it, but you might want to hold off thinking that until the end of this video. So I'm going to start off with some of these smaller and simple requests or concerns, but as the stories go on, they'll start to get a little bit more outlandish, and to be quite honest with you, a bit more absurd. That means the last example that I give you will most likely be the strangest request or concern up until now, that is, but I hate to tell you it's probably not going to be the last one either. Now, these odd situations probably happened to me before, but I never realized that it was anything out of the ordinary, though. So when did I first realize it then? Well, I was working on a coveted steel trimmer, and I don't recall which model it was, but it was a decent one, and it was only a few years old. After fixing it, I then gave it back to the owner, and I thought everything went just as expected, and I was even able to keep the original high-quality carb working without replacing it, because I knew that there are people out there that care about keeping their quality machines as original as possible. But I wasn't prepared for the level of this sort of behavior. The next day after I gave them the trimmer, they sent me a message asking about some missing parts for the carb that I had taken off. So on this particular type of carb, it comes with plastic limiters to keep the user from making anything more than a fraction of a turn to the fuel adjustment screws. Now I took them off because I had to make a few turns on the screws to get it to work after servicing, but I never put them back on so that future adjustments will be a lot easier to do. So here's where things got a little strange, at least for me. They asked me what I did with the limiters. I told them, after I'd taken them off to make the needed adjustments, I threw them into the trash can because I didn't have plans on putting them back on. In fact, most customers never even noticed that the limiters were even there in the first place. I then told them that not having the limiters on the car but was not going to hurt it and that the screws would not get loose because these particular ones had springs on them, but they weren't satisfied with that answer and asked me if I could retrieve them. I said that I could because luckily for them it wasn't trash day. I then found the limiters in the trash can, put them in a Ziploc bag for safekeeping, and the next time I saw them, I gave them to them. Now, I thought it was kind of strange to ask for them back, but I just figured they were trying to keep the trimmer as original as possible so I could somewhat understand where they were coming from. Now the reason I'm even mentioning this minor example of customers being particular is only because it was the first time I realized that this could be an issue if it gets much worse than looking in the trash can for a couple of plastic pieces. And if you hadn't figured it out yet, this is only the tip of the iceberg of strangeness and concerns that customers sometimes have. Now as long as the request is something that I don't have to go too far out of my way for, I don't mind it too much, but what happens when it goes a bit too far? That's what happens in the next situation. So I don't know if you've seen any of my older videos, but years ago, I used to not clean anything before fixing it. But what happened was that I had to fix a really nice looking steel chainsaw that needed a tune-up. It still started and ran, but it leaked a small amount of fuel, and you could tell it hadn't been serviced in a very long time. After getting a tune-up kit, minus the carb of course, I replaced the fuel lines and grommet, fuel filter, air filter, and of course the spark plug. Now, since I had to deal with the fuel lines, I had to clean that area only because I didn't want to get sawdust in the fuel tank. Now, after getting all the parts back onto the saw, I then tested it for about 15 minutes, let it cool down, and then started it back up, and everything seemed just fine. The next day, I gave it back to them, and they seemed pretty happy at first, but that quickly changed. 
This started off by asking me questions about the chainsaw, the first one being why I didn't clean it. Now at first I was quite surprised by the question. I then told them that I wasn't aware they wanted the saw to be cleaned in the first place as part of doing engine maintenance and that general saw maintenance was their responsibility. Now if you wanted me to do that, the only thing you needed to do was communicate that to me. Otherwise, don't expect me to read your mind. The last time I checked, reading people's minds without their consent was still considered poor etiquette. So it turns out the other person who used to fix their saw would also give it a full cleaning and they just expected it from me as well. So I told them that I didn't have an issue doing what they wanted, just let me know. That way I can also make sure their collars are starched and that they had smart water on hand and not Aquafina the next time they came over. They didn't take kindly to the last statement, but they said they would try to remind me so that next time I don't forget. After seeing how this interaction was going, I made sure that this was the last time I was available to do any work for them. Problem solved, right? Unfortunately, no. What happened after that was a stream of messages trying to get me to service their saw with, of course, extra cleaning on top of everything else. Don't worry, though. After about a month or so, they finally stopped messaging me, and hopefully they found another person to give them the excellent service they deserve. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hey, don't you routinely clean stuff now anyway? And the answer is yes. Yes, I do. But I also have the choice as to who I help, and don't forget, you have the same choice as well. Now, just because I choose to indulge myself in a service role doesn't mean you get to boss me around like I'm at work. That's the job of the wonderful leadership I have at my real job. They're the only ones I let drag me down into a pit of self-loathing. The next example of missed opportunities to correctly read someone's thoughts or emotions was when I was working on a lawnmower. All I had to do was to get a mower back up and running after it had been left for dead in a barn for a really long time. Now, I tried my best to save the original car, but I ended up replacing it anyway. I also had to replace a wheel that was badly worn at the axle and causing the mower to have difficulties rolling. By the end of the project, the mower started very well and was now a lot easier to use in comparison to what it was like before working on it. So when does it turn bad then? If you guessed when I gave it back to the customer, you'd be correct. After picking up the mower, they asked me what all I had to do to it. I then told them about replacing the carb and the wheel, so of course the bill was a bit more than usual because of the new parts, and this is when it got weird. They then asked to see the old carb and the bad wheel. I said that I'd have to give it to them the next time I saw them because I didn't know they wanted the original parts back. So I asked them why they wanted the old parts back, and what they said after that caught me off guard. They said, Well, how do I know that the parts you replaced really needed replacing and that you didn't replace them and are just charging me for new parts? I really wish I could have seen my own face when they said this out loud because I'm pretty sure it must have been amusing. I then proceeded to show them the video of the actual repair I made on their mower. I said to them, do you agree that this is your mower on this screen? At which point they said yes. I then said, as you can see, I'm removing the old carb and replacing it with a new one. Does the carb on the mower look like the new one that I'm putting onto the engine? At which point they said yes. I then said to them, does the wheel in the video look like the one that's on the mower right now? To which they answered yes. So you agree that I replaced the old parts with new parts then, to which they answered yes, but then they added that they still wanted the old parts as further proof. Now at this point, I really didn't have much else to offer since visual proof of the installation of the new parts was not enough, so the next day I gave them the old wheel and the carb, and luckily I have not heard from them ever again. Now there's nothing wrong with asking for the old parts that I had to replace, and I really don't need to know why, especially if you let me know ahead of time. That way, I won't be surprised when you ask for them back or as to your reasoning, and not only will you get a working machine back, but all the original parts as well, along with my gratitude. However, telling me that you want proof that I'm trying not to rip you off is pretty amazing and brash, especially if it's done on a whim. So wanting your parts back as proof is one thing, but is there something else even more incredible than that? Yes, there is, unfortunately. It was several years ago when I had a complete stranger contact me about working on some of their equipment. Now the key word being some. Now I'm a bit leery when it comes to working on stuff for people I've never met before, but at the time I was still pretty new to the hobby. So I wanted all the experience I can get, so I took them up on the offer. They said they'd come by the next day with the stuff, and to be honest, I was kind of looking forward to it. But it changed my mind pretty quickly the moment I saw what all they brought me. So they arrived in a minivan and it was pretty obvious they didn't have any of the back seats in it, meaning they were using it to haul cargo and when they opened the back I was a bit shocked at just how much stuff was in it. The entire back of the van was filled with mowers, blowers, and more trimmers that I could count and I had to ask them which ones they wanted me to fix and you're going to love the answer they gave me. They turned to me with a puzzled look and said with a straight face, all of them. I'm sure you can imagine my surprise when they said this. I said, you want me to take all this stuff to fix? And they said, yes. 
Now, I did not ask them how many items they were going to bring me, but they never said they had more than what anyone would call a reasonable number of items to bring either. So who's at fault here? Was it mine for not asking, or was it theirs for not being open about the situation they were going to drop on me? So I looked right in their face and said, I've never had someone bring me more than a couple of items at a time, so I was not expecting this many. At which point they said very bluntly, Well, I had all this stuff sitting around, so I figured that if you were going to work on some of them, you might as well work on all of them. Now, I'm pretty sure I had a very amused expression on my face when they said this, but like I said, I was still new and needed experience. So I think I took out about four mowers, two or three blowers, and probably a dozen string trimmers out of the back of the van and put them into the shop. And over the course of the next few weeks, I ended up getting most of the stuff they brought me fixed up and returned back to them. Now, as for the other stuff that I didn't fix, some of them were too far gone to be saved or the price for the parts was more than the machine was worth, so they were used for parts. Now, after everything was fixed, I asked them rather bluntly, what were they going to do with all the stuff that I fixed for them? At which point they said that they were going to sell them on the marketplace to make more money. That way they could buy more stuff that needed fixing. So after that day, every time they messaged me, I would ask them, how many items do you need fixed this time? And if it was more than a reasonable amount, I would tell them that I could only work on a handful of items at a time due to space or scheduling. Look, I don't have a problem if you have an entire garage full of stuff to fix, but don't expect to dump it all onto me so it becomes my problem. Now later on, I was able to find out what was going on. It turns out what this person was doing was going to auctions or estate sales and buying as many items as they could to get the best price. And then they would have someone else fix them and then they'd sell them on the marketplace. It's not a bad plan, but it definitely needs some fine tuning. But them dumping a van full of stuff on one person was a rough way to introduce themselves. Now, unfortunately, I don't recall how our little arrangement ended, but more than likely, it probably didn't end very well, at least for them. Now, all these wonderful and wholesome experiences with some of the best people in the world have been very educational, to say the least. It's made me ask very specific questions and have pretty high standards when it comes to these types of interactions with people, but they did help to make me who I am today, and to be honest, I think it was very beneficial, at least that's what I tell my therapist. Of course, I wish my interactions with my customers all went the way I would want them to go, but then I'd be in the same boat as the customers who also have their own expectations of how things should go as well. But I can't let these differences affect me too much, and I just have to accept that I'm going to find a few interesting individuals along the way, and it's up to me how I deal with them. I would try to be as understanding as possible, but sometimes it just seems like no matter how hard I try, it's simply not going to happen. So my question is, would you consider any of the stories I just mentioned as being strange or off the wall? Like I said, they may be odd to you, but to them, it's just normal. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.